Hey guys and welcome back to Clinical Physio with me, Phil Richards. In today's video we're going to be taking you through the posterior apprehension test for the shoulder. So what is this test for? Well if we think about the name and break that down, posterior apprehension, we're talking about people that have had traumatic dislocation or repeated dislocations. And we're thinking about the back of the joint, so posterior. So classically with an anterior dislocation. We're looking at this sort of elevation into lateral rotation here where the humeral head can come forwards. That's not the case with the posterior one. We can expect some sort of violent trauma or something to smash down and, and push the, the humeral head out and backwards. And it's more likely to happen instead of this way for anterior, this way for posterior because the joint is now in a position where there's more freedom for it to push through and out the back. So if in your subjective history, your patient reports the dislocation or trauma or repeated clunking, um, this might be a good opportunity to use this test to see where they're up to. Now, in terms of what you're looking for, you are looking for apprehension or pain. Please be careful with the apprehension because if a patient feels like it's going to re-dislocate, it probably is. So we're gonna do these tests very slowly. So how do we do it? What we're going to do is first we're going to start with the unaffected side. So we'll assume that's Marie's right side and we've already tested that one and it's normal and fine and we've got a good appreciation for what that feels like. And now we're going to test the affected shoulder. So we're going to grab hold of the patient's wrist. We're going to scoop under the elbow and we're going to come up into this position here. This is our starting position. From here what we're going to do is we're going to push down the elbow to get an axial loading in the humerus. Once we've loaded, we're going to internally rotate and adduct. For you to get this to be effective, what I'd like you to imagine, if we just use Marie's other side, if you can see this, is we're trying to shear this humeral head out the back here. So I often think if you visualize what you're doing, you're much likely to wind the test up and perform it better. So as we're pushing down here, we're rotating in and trying to glide the joint off and out that direction. And as we get up and we do the test, remember if our patient looks very apprehensive in the face or they go, no, 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 stop the test. You can always mark down on your, um, in your notes where you got to, that can be a helpful marker and also guide your clinical impression. So do we use this test a lot? Well, I would say that any of the apprehension tests or anything to do with repeated dislocations are very useful. They're useful for clinical impressions and diagnosis when it's not clear what's happened, and they're useful for objective markers to see where the patient's up to. Guys, thanks so much for watching. We'll see you again soon on Clinical Physio.